For the last six days or so, I've been playing this game called Mortal Online 2. I even went so far as to upload a video about what I thought of the game. How even though I was aware of all of the exploitive issues and the gold duping and all the other things, even though I didn't say that in the video, but of course, I mean, I've been streaming that game for like, uh, I don't know, 120 hours or so for the last six days, plus the time that I spent playing it off stream, now clocking in over 135 hours, and then... Knowing full well all of those issues had people still telling me that I didn't understand what the game was about and the game isn't good. And I'm just in the honeymoon phase. That got me to thinking. Now that I've got somewhere around, I don't know, between three accounts, 9,000 hours in Escape from Tarkov, plus all of the time that I've spent editing videos, researching different topics, doing different kinds of testing and whatnot, it started begging the question... At what point does a video game become, like, not good? See, because Escape from Tarkov, I guess you could argue, is in the same boat. The only major difference being that Mortal Online 2 already went to a, I guess, 1.0 release, and in which case there is some devs' feet being held to the fire in the sense that certain aspects of the game on release aren't really there anymore, and the game's being offered as a, a game-for-service kind of deal, where it's ongoing updates and additional additions that will keep people engaged for hopefully years to come, although the player base of Mortal Online 2 is significantly smaller. You compare that to a game like Escape from Tarkov, where it's still been in beta for now five or six years, and through all of that, it's definitely seen its share of issues. Dates on releases of certain pieces of content being pushed back significantly further than anything Mortal Online has ever promised, as seen in the transcript of an interview that was done six years ago at Gamescom, where the question was asked, when are you planning to release the game? In which case, Nikita Boyanov, COO of Tarkov, said this year and it will be a full release. I even have vivid recollections of when I first purchased Escape from Tarkov at the very tail end of 2017 that they were teasing Streets of Tarkov to be released at some point in the first quarter of 2018. Obviously, that has still yet to happen. On top of all of the other promises that have been made by the development team in the form of different animation reworks, lighting fixes, sound adjustments, Steam Audio is going to fix everything until it didn't and won't, now we've gotten to the point where they're going to remove it entirely, and then moving into the back and forth about whether or not the netcode associated with Escape from Tarkov is client authoritative or server authoritative. And by the way, while Nikita and a whole bunch of other people will say that the game is server authoritative, I'd really love to see how they can say that that's the case when player movement is very much dependent on whether or not the client says something happened. If that were to be the case, then people with unstable internet would find themselves rubber banding around on maps an awful lot more than they do, but more on that another time. I would really love to test some intermittent lag to see whether or not somebody actually experiences any kind of jitter first person. I doubt they do. But anyway, now the question exists, is Tarkov a good game? Is it still a good game? See, in this game, I have gobs of experience. So if I'm going to speak as to whether or not a game like Mortal Online after 135 hours is still a good game, and people want to, I guess, call that into question, then would a game where I have 9,000 hours of experience, if I were to say that that game is still good for me, is it just that I'm ignoring the bugs? Have I accepted them? Do I have rose-colored glasses? Am I just dick-riding another developer? Or does the game still end up having some merit? Now, of course, I am relatively biased in the fact that I do this for a living, Right, I stream this game every day on Twitch, and here I am making a video about it, which you guys end up watching as consumed content, and I therefore make money off of those views. But to a general player, would the game still be entertaining after 9,000 hours? Maybe, maybe not. I think the point in this is that it really comes down to a subjective nature. With games as rife and full of bugs as they are, can you still find merit in the game? And if you as the player still find merit in the game and enjoy it, is that wrong? I don't think so. I think that if you enjoy something, you should be able to enjoy it. I don't know how to draw very well. I'm a stick figure artist. I can't draw to save my ass. But my son, my 17-year-old son, he's developed an awful lot of different things. He's drawn my logo, for instance. An awful lot of the stuff that is on my merch has been designed by him. He's got drawing tablets and little gloves and stuff that he wears in order to be able not to smudge the screen. He's got different styluses. <laughs> he can he can draw his butt off and he's very very good at it in fact he'd probably end up being very good as he continues through his high school and into college as an artist and my job as a father is try to cultivate that but if i look at it like it's not any fun should i therefore then judge him as someone that enjoys art and he should no longer participate in that because i just don't get it should i dissuade him from enjoying his art because the stylus that he has chosen to draw with on the tablet that he has chosen to draw onto are both somehow inferior to 
I don't know, another brand or another game? I think not. The same can be said for video games. Whether or not someone enjoys something, be it a video game, music, art form of any other kind, going to the gym, hell, anything, a television show, that is their subjective thing. That's what they like. The idea of judging someone based on their opinions and the idea that they don't get it doesn't really seem to make a whole lot of sense to me. If I die to a scav with a Taz at 50 meters, head eyes, having a million ruble kit on, do I then baby rage and say the game is trash or do we just laugh and say that's Tarkov and we take the bad with the good? For some people, that's a no, they leave. And for other people, like myself, it's just a chuckle nuts moment, we move on to the next one. Because there is good in the game that allows us to enjoy it on the back end. If you're a solo player and you come up on a three-man, like I did this morning, and ended up dropping these guys, am I going to walk away from the game and say that it's trash because I made a good play? No, absolutely not. I'm on cloud nine. This was an amazing moment. I'm going to go back and try for another one. That's the adrenaline rush that we chase all the time. In a game like Mortal Online, I could say the same thing. If you end up in a large group PvP fight and your team seems to trounce the other one, that was an amazing moment. But if you get dropped by a four-man squad that's chasing you through the woods only to end up losing your horse as you cross a lake and you drown, then the game sucks. You're going to throw it away, put it away, and just claim that the reason why you're not doing as well as the other guy is because they have millions of gold and duped items and whatever else is going on? No. You just play the game. If at some point you decide that the game is no longer for you and you walk away from it, personally, I would rather not judge you for the decisions that you make as to whether or not you're going to play a game or not. People that I know play hentai games that are located all over Steam. They enjoy it. That's what they like doing. Does that make them odd or weird? No. It just means that they have the preference to want to play that. That's their gig. There is a market out there for everyone. Just let them spend the money and spend their time the way that they want to. The object of judging other people based on what it is that they find to enjoy only seems like it has some type of a foothold in gaming. Like, who cares? Here's the part about this that I think I find to be the most interesting. If I dislike a video game and I tell other people that the game is garbage, without offering up any other constructive criticism or giving reasons as to why, other than to say that the game has bugs and people were duplicating cash or whatever else, if those are the only things that I have to complain about or the time frame being too long, and I decide that it's not for me anymore, and I tell everybody else that the game is garbage and that the devs don't listen, then they don't play it either, right? What if I log back in? If I log back in after telling everybody that the game is garbage and no one should play it, there's no one playing it now. I influenced other people to not play that video game. If no one's playing it, then what do I talk about? How the game is dead, let's say? The dead game that I helped to influence become more dead? Gee, it would be awful nice if we had more people to play with, wouldn't it? My point here is, is that... You can't have it both ways. If you're going to talk about how the game is garbage, and I'm so glad that I walked away from it and everyone should too, the moment that I decide that I'm going to pick the game back up and there's no one to end up playing against or with, isn't that partially my fault? Personally, I believe that the developers of Escape from Tarkov are working extremely hard in their game. And while I offer up things that I say it's in critique of them, I want to make it abundantly clear that I vastly support what it is that they're doing because they have a genuine passion for it and they're creating something unique. The same reasons by which I end up supporting people like Henrik and the folks over at Star Vault because I think that they're generating something unique and I think that the game has good bones. The idea of whether or not Tarkov is good or not should be a subjective one. And the idea of trying to influence other people as to whether or not they should play a game should come with some caveat, some amount of actual constructive criticism. I don't like the game because I don't like Nikita Boyanev's beard isn't really solid enough. I don't like the game because there's a lot of cheaters. There's a lot of cheaters in every video game. I don't like the video game because there's a lot of people that exploit. There's exploiters in every video game. Do you still play Warzone? Do you still play Apex? Lots of people cheat in both of those games, but you still have hardcore player bases that cannot put the game down. Don't you? After 9,000 hours, I still find Escape from Tarkov fun. After 135 hours, I still find Mortal Online 2 fun. And I find both of them fun for the exact same reasons. It's a hardcore game. I can lose my stuff, which means I have risk. That is inherently fun for me. Things have complicated systems. Those are also inherently fun for me. There's a steep learning curve. Inherently fun for me. And there's a big world to explore. Lots of different things. Jump scares, people that are going to ambush you, all kinds of crazy shit goes on in both of those worlds. And for those reasons, I still like both of those games. It shouldn't matter the amount of playtime that you have. The idea of a honeymoon phase seems to be rather ridiculous to me. Let the reasons for why it is that you don't want to play a game be your own. I would caution you against claiming the phrase dead game. 
And of course, at this point, someone will just chime in and say again that I'm a dev dick writer, paying no attention to the fact that just uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I ended up making a video about how the devs were completely inept with dealing with cheating. But hey, everyone's going to cherry pick an opinion, right? Right. We'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.